All right, welcome everybody. For those of you who will be watching us online, please remember to like, subscribe, or share if you like and if you find this information helpful. Today we're going to be talking about the Angola trip and we're going to be hearing from some of us who are privileged enough to travel down to Africa, to Angola, to Luanda, as well as Ntaya. And I've put together a little photo montage here based on the photos that we received from some of the people who are out there. And so we'll just watch this and then react to it. Muda, muda, tu du 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 vai muda, 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 tu du 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 vai muda. Muda, muda, tu du 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 vai muda, 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 muda. Muda, tu du 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 vai muda, 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 tu du 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 vai muda. Muda, muda, tu du 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 vai muda, 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 muda. Muda, tu du 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 vai muda, 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 tu du 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 vai muda. Muda, muda, tu du 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 vai muda, 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 muda. Muda, tu du 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 vai muda, 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 tu du 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 vai muda. Muda, muda, tu du 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 vai muda, 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 muda. Muda, tu du 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 vai muda, 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 
muda tu du 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 wai muda 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 tu du 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 wai muda Muda, muda, tu 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 tu, why muda? 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 Muda. Muda tu du 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 wai muda 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 tu du 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 wai muda Muda, muda, tu 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 tu, why muda? Muda, muda, tu 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 tu, why muda? Muda, muda, tu tu. All right. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Mama Matuzola or Mama Teresa. Welcome everybody who's joined while this was playing. I was playing that so that maybe we can trigger some memories in the minds of those and the hearts of those who traveled there. Uh, but I'd like to hear what y'all thought about it, those who went there and those who didn't. What comes to mind as you watched those images and had that music? What came to mind? The one thing that kept coming to my mind and that kept it coming to my mind all week was how, you know, without the knowledge that we were thinking that a lot of things were prophecies that were to be fulfilled and they were already fulfilled. You know, just looking at that palm tree, it reminded me, it reminds me of Psalm 1 when it says, uh, you know, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. His leaves shall not wither and everything he does will prosper. And I come to find out that that tree where my Amona, um, his umbilical cord is buried, is <laughs> the same palm tree that they're talking about. And even in Revelation 7, 9 and 10, it talks about that he will... Uh, that you will have these palm trees. They was talking about Isaiah, that he's the brighter morning star. And it says that he would give you palm branches. But we we never understood the connection, you know, until we saw that tree face to face. And I I didn't remember, but it was brother um to somebody that came up to me and he says, Mama Royal. Isn't this the tree that you saw in your dream? I have seen that tree, but I like, I, you know, there's so much, so much to absorb and so much to take in, you know, that I forgot that I had seen that tree in my dream. But when it talks about the palm tree and, you know, remember when um Isaiah came into the town before his death and they 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 had palm trees waving in their hands we had no idea what the connection was you know until we went to Sulumungu and you know all these scriptures started coming back to us and we were thinking these are future scriptures but these are scriptures that 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 has already been fulfilled and and are are still fulfilling now so you know that's the one thing that that caught me as I, I was looking at at the video. Thank you, sir. Wow, Mamaroa daughter, you made a very, very important statement at the beginning. You said a lot of these things 
or places or people or events would not have much meaning if you don't have the background information about them or knowledge about them, right? Then you went on to talk about that, that palm tree, right? And please shed some more light about why is that palm tree there? I mean, palm trees typically grow around coastal areas. This is up in the mountains, right? In fact, the word Zulu, Zulu Mungu, Zulu, if I'm correct, means heavens, or right? So it's not anything at the beach. <laughs> it's something high up in the mountain. So what's the story behind that palm tree for the benefit of those who've not had this before? And especially, you mentioned Revelation 7 and I think 9, but you, could you also talk about Revelation 12? Okay, so, you know, I'm going to read directly from this book because this is so important. This is a booklet that we were given, you know, um, while we were in Zulumungu. And it, it talks a lot about, you know, the significance of Zulumungu. And it ties up a lot of um, loose ends for me. Um, in Revelation 12, the scripture speaks about a woman who was clothed by the sun. I have, I, like, I can, I can never say this without, you know, talking about that, that statement that she was clothed by the sun. It means that she was melanated because that's how the sun clothes you. If you're melanated, you get darker. The mm -hmm. sun activates the melanin in your skin. So the woman was clothed by the sun and she was uh, getting ready to give birth and the scriptures say that the the that the enemy that the satan the dragon was waiting for her to give birth so that he could swallow up the child and um it says that the most high prepared a place for the woman that she could run into the wilderness and hide you know so i thought that that was a future prophecy you know, and it was only when I went there that I realized that was not a future prophecy. That was a prophecy that already took place. Uh, Simon Toko's mother, she, um, you know, as I spoke earlier, that they, the, the, the people of Simon Toko, the followers of Simon Toko were being um persecuted and they had to run they had to run into the bush they had to run into the forest into the mountains to hide many of them were killed you know even as the, the when the bishop was speaking he broke out in tears thinking about how many of his friends were killed just trying to preserve this word uh trying to um preserve the truth because they did not want anybody to know about Simon Toko. And so his mother had, she was pregnant and she had to run up into the mountains and hide. And um, when she ran up into the mountains where they call Zulumungu today is where she gave birth to uh, Simon Toko. And um, he was not, a single child, he was born a twin, you know, and his twin sister died. And uh, Simon Toko was very, very sick as a child from birth because the enemy wanted to take him out. They saw his promise, they saw his destiny, they saw his star, and they did not want him coming into this world. And so uh, his mother, where we where we were standing by that palm tree, it um that's where his umbilical cord was buried. And you know, when I spoke about Psalm one, it says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Well, that tree is planted by two rivers. So, you know, we were thinking that these are future scriptures that, you know, that are random, but 
they're not random. They're, they're, they're all connected. But it's only when you go there and you see for yourself that you understand that there is a connection. Uh, this is uh something that I, I think I, I have posted in the um chat about the connection between Simon Toku and that the rivers and um it says this um the spiritual and historical value of the location of entire. It says while the scriptural spiritual city of Sadu Zulu, Sadi Zulumungu represents the symbol of Christmas identity, meaning the birth of Christ, that is where his umbilical cord is. That is where the blood of the covenant, through which he placed the symbol of love of the Most High Jehovah God towards all the children of God purchased by the blood of the Lamb. The Father Mayamona, the spiritual city of Entire, carries out the fulfillment of the will of God, the Father, according to the prophecy of Christ in Jesus in St. Luke 17:37, i.e., the place where the holy body of the Son of Man was buried at the second advent of the Messiah. For this time, the tomb was not empty, as Jesus of Nazareth had said. And they answered and said unto him, We are Lord. And he said unto them, Wherever the body is, the eagle will gather. End of quote. Here in this place, nations, peoples, races, tribes, and languages of the entire world will come to sing a new song saying, you are worthy to take the book and to open its seals for you were slain and with your blood you purchased us for God from every tribe and tongue and people and nations and you made us kings and priests to, your, to our God and we will reign on the earth. Revelation 5, 9 and 10. End of quote. So, you know... <laughs> It was only being there and seeing all of this ourselves that we understood and we were able to connect so many scriptures that seemed like they were at random. They were never at random. We just didn't understand. We didn't have the information and get that. So you, you mentioned several times the word Zulu Mungu. Um, and, and welcome, brother, to Samba. In fact, if you can hear me, you might give me the answer to this. Um, we, just reviewed, we just reviewed some pictures of the trip to Angola. And my mother and daughter was telling us about um, the palm tree and the events around uh, Sima Toko's birth and the umbilical cord. And that place is called Zulumungu. Now, Zulu means heavens or sky, from what I understand. And Mungu, I don't know what Mungu means in any Angolan dialect, but I know in Swahili, it means God. What does Mungu mean in Kikongo or any Angolan uh, dialect? Anybody? I'm going to read it right out of the book for you. Sure. It says the meaning and historical spiritual value of the town of Sadu Zulumungu. The literal meaning of Zulumungu word in Kinkongo is Zulu means sky and Mungu mount. Zulumungu gives the meaning of mountain of the heavens or mountain linked with heaven. It is the village that is called Sadu Zulumungu where the vulnerable director and spiritual leader of the church of our Lord Jesus Christ in the world, His Holiness, the prophet Simao Gonzalez Toko was born. All Did right. Excellent. Thank you. And I see Brother Tusamba confirmed the same thing in the chat. It means Mungo means mountain. Wow. Okay. The rest of you who are on the trip... What came to mind when you saw those pictures or what comes to mind when you remember the trip? Anything that comes to mind. 
Uh, let me rephrase it and put it this way. If you were to think of your most memorable moments that you experienced, which ones would you say those were? Your most memorable moments from the trip. Welcome, Elder Makailu. I had not seen you. My apologies. Welcome. Welcome, Elder. Welcome. Ngeta. All right. We are talking to you guys who went down there on the trip down to Angola. Or rather, I should say up to Angola. You know, what were some of your most memorable moments? Anybody who was out there? I, I think for me, um, just touching down on the homeland, um, being that I'm the first one out of my family to ever um, go back, had the opportunity to go back to the homeland to actually feel and see and hear the sounds Mm -hmm. um, of Africa, seeing people that look like me, mm -hmm. um, the spiritual aspect of it, um, just being in the presence of the worship that we did and mm -hmm. had, um, just meeting the elders, um, those seers, some of the seers, um, just coming in contact with them, just conversating, um, just gleaning the wisdom, the spiritual wisdom from them and, and listening and taking it in. And it, it, it was just um, a phenomenal uh, opportunity to be a part of this um, history and um, prophecy made at both at the same time, um, which was just awesome within itself. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. 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 Yeah, that, that is deep. That is deep. You know, I cannot even think of what it's like because I grew up in Kenya, in Africa, you know. But yeah, yeah. And, and, and also so, um the most experience that I didn't know that I was going to be consecrated. I didn't know that um I was going to be able to go into the tabernacle um, and um, just the whole um, feeling and, 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 and um, being indoctrinated as, um, as a pastor, which I was already that before I came there, but, you know, just to, um, with the toko was, to me, that meant so much more because I'm connected. Mm, I'm connected to my roots. I'm connected to my people. I'm connected to my culture. I'm connected to my spirituality, my true spirituality. Um, I, I think that's what um, meant so much to me, meant so much to me. Elder Makailu, um, you're in the u.s right now in case somebody yes. watches this and gets in touch with us and says i want to connect with elder uh what side of the u.s are you in i'm over on the northeast um near the maryland dc line i'm from pennsylvania but i'm originally from baltimore maryland um we have an assembly um the tokos assembly just just started here in the united states um we're in a process of building right now. Um, so um, Bishop um, Vimba um, from Angola um, had came to him and his family had came and Mama Maria had came to the United States to establish the, um, the Tokoist ministry here in, um, in the Maryland, D.C. area, Virginia, D.C. area. All right. Excellent. Excellent. You know, um, as I was looking at the photos uh, that people have been sharing from the trip, <clears throat> and I included some of those photos in the video that I just shared, which was a photo montage. Um, one thing that struck me was that even for those of us who went on the trip, 
some of us were meeting one another for the first time, right? Now, I know those in the US, there's some who had traveled to, I think, DC, and mm -hmm. they met uh, with, with uh, Reverend Bemba in DC. They had a little conference or a conference before yes. the trip. So let me start by asking, for those of you who went to that place in DC, what was it like meeting other people who shared the same faith and for the first time you were getting to meet them? What was that experience like? Um, that was, I was there as well. Um, that was an awesome experience within itself too. Um, that was my first time meeting um, Pastor Vember and his wife and just the spiritual conversations that we had um, before the conference even started. I mean, it, it's like we've known each other forever. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, you had other um, pastors and other people and leaders um, that attended and spoke. But um, one, once, once, um, speaker that spoke Robert Lucas, Pastor Robert Lucas. I think he's from Nevada, if I'm not mistaken. And um, and he he gave a a story pertaining to um, Prophet Simon Toko. And when he explained, and that's when I caught, I, that's when I really caught the difference between the Tokoists and your modern day Christianity the man-made religion mm -hmm. one key element that he said that stuck with me and I, I i i will never forget he said that when when the um pastor of the baptist church asked simon toko to um to pray and simon toko prayed that the holy spirit would then come to deliver his people and um he said that the that the wonders and, and the miracles and everything that took place after that, um, he said that he said that the Tokoists, the Mwanda of Avivala is what, what the Tokoists is guided by the Holy Spirit. But when but the difference is that it's the Holy Spirit that is guiding the Tokoists. And with your modern day religions are all man-made. The difference is you dealing with man-made religions versus the movement of, of the Holy Spirit, the, Mo, the Moana Vivila. That's what makes the difference. That's where the power lies. That's where you see back in 2000 years ago, you starting to see the miracles and the wonders and the power that's the power that the church has been looking for that they have never tapped into and found because they were not made of the Mwanda of Avivala. That's the difference. And that, when he said that, that really clicked with inside of me and I never will ever forget that is the difference. What is guided by the Holy Spirit and what you see is not is guided by man's hands. Mm. Ngeta. Ngeta. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Absolutely powerful. Absolutely powerful. Um, I don't know if there's a hand to ask a question, but do we have any reaction from uh, anyone else who got to meet the rest of the family for the first time this year, whether in DC or in Angola, what was it like for you? You know, Mama Matuzola, Mama Margaret, Mama Royal Daughter, you guys had been online for years, you know, but I've seen pictures, um, you know, Michelle, I've seen pictures where you got to meet these people. What was it like? What feelings were you having? What thoughts were you having? Go ahead, Michelle. Um, it was it was incredible um, to actually physically touch 
Mama Royal, uh, Mama Margaret, Matazola. Um, when I like when I arrived, um, everyone was upstairs in the um, restaurant eating. And just seeing everyone around the table was just like, wow, you know, like, would be cliche, <laughs> but it was like seeing the Lord's Supper, like all of, like, we're just all with the, the disciples waiting for our instructions. Like we've been in training for years and now separately, and now we're all together on one accord. And even when I held Speshi for the first time, although I've never ever met her, I it was like this energy. We hugged, and I think it was about five minutes, and we just danced in a circle. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we were just, just dancing in a circle hugging but we were just in mm. a circle and it was like we didn't care who was watching it was just like it was incredible and the thing was this is it didn't even feel like anyone was a stranger like it, it really did feel oh mm, sorry <laughs> oh. Sister Michelle, how long had you known Speshi for, or Tusamba, um, or Benika? I know you guys have met on online. You know how long? How many years? I met Benika first when I went to South Africa in 2020, mm -hmm. and I was stuck in. Um, due to COVID, I was stuck in um South Africa, um, and that's how I managed. I got to learn more about the Tokawis church. Mm. So I met him there, but he was he wasn't as outspoken as he is now mm -hmm. when I first met him. Mm -hmm. Um especially I began speaking to her the year later after I after I was there and then she went um she was the next sister that went to South Africa in Johannesburg and she got all her teaching. I was really jealous because she was there for months <laughs> and she was in, she was in the house and she, she joined, she was able to go into the tabernacle. She got to hear, but all my teaching was over the phone with Pastor Kize, where she had face to face. So I was like, it's not fair, but anyway, I love her. <laughs> But um, yeah, so I'm. That's how I started talking to her then, and then I didn't physically meet Tasamba until April this year <laughs> when we went to Europe, and um, and then everyone else was just the you other know, day. Michelle, I met you twice in Angola. For your wedding come on you forgot oh sorry <laughs> you know what i totally forgot <laughs> i forgot about that okay yeah i, mean, I met him three, first three times in now angola. three times now yes yeah in uh, first in angola then in europe and then again not so long ago thank you to Zamba. yeah and he helped a great deal during the wedding like he, he was there like from start to finish <laughs> Even decorated our room. But anyway, that's another story. Um, but yeah, so me and everyone else, Mama uh, Matazola, Mama Margaret, um, Royal Daughter, um, it was like I already knew them. Um, but it it was different. I can't put it into words. It was just totally different. It's not like how, you know, you 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 meet somebody online and then you go, okay, yeah, all right, well, I'll come to your city. What are you going to be wearing? Oh, I'm going to be wearing this and whatever, and you meet them and then it's awkward. No, it wasn't awkward. It was like, this is my family. Like, I could be myself. 
I could be myself. Um, and nobody was judging. It, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it was incredible. It was incredible. Right, I'm going to stop there because I don't want to cry anymore. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Sister Michelle. That was awesome. That was awesome. And by the way, congratulations, Elder Makayilu, you know, for being ordained. It is really a privilege to have uh, an ordained Tokoista amongst us for those in the U.S., you know, congratulations on that. Uh, Brother Tusamba, you've been all over the globe this year. What was it like for you meeting some of these people the first time? What was going through your mind? Matondo uh, Masaka, Mahelda, it's good to see you once again. Uh, CM family, uh, Tatanzama is good. I would like start saying that. Uh, it was an incredible trip, uh, first of all, to meet all the mothers that I had no uh, opportunity to see them before. Uh, things started like this. When I, cause I, I was going to fetch everybody that was coming uh, to Angola in the airport. But when we went to fetch Mama Roy, Sister Kese, Mama Margaret, Mama Margaret did something uh, very deep. We call her a tabernacle choir. Out of the blue, we were just singing. And then she came up, Elder Makail, with, with, one, with one of the songs that is Tonda and Tonda Fumuis, Let Us Thanks, uh, Isaiah Congo. And we were singing that song. And they said, wow, what a beautiful song. Let us try. Uh, to sing this in the service. My other uh, Mutaba, we didn't know that was the song that Tatanzam was holding. That was the song that Maya Mona was holding as well. We went in the service, we started, Mama and uh, everybody gave the, the testimony. That service was one of the most powerful service in Angola. I can say that the entire church felt it. Wow. It was like we were in another spiritual realm. Mm. I could say that it was the time that the Bible, what the Bible say, the, the two stick coming together. Mm. Mm. When our family from diaspora came in Angola and that service, when they were presenting um, Simon talk according to the dreams, revelation, Mm. Uh, and so on the, the church couldn't resist mm. everybody were crying mm -hmm. we could see the vatas moving in the spirit mm. and to close yes Oma, Margaret comes with a tonda and tonda song that song was very powerful and I was crying even before the song. And then I cried again to see what Mama Roya always sings, the king is coming. Simon Toko, he couldn't resist himself, stop himself. He also cried, one of the testimony. He cried because he wasn't believing that the prophecy was coming to pass. <laughs> Many People from the diaspora have gone to Angola in, in the service, but they they didn't have that spiritual connection like the Banta family. It was very deep, Elder uh, Mutaba. And then I saw Simon Toko, the king, leaving his throne, coming down after the song to greet everyone one by one sister case is not here sister case said when simon talk was giving the ends um to everyone in the reception moment in the service unfortunately somehow simon talk missed her she passed it and then she came to me oh to someone simon talk didn't greet me oh my goodness no so when Simon Toko came, 
for the second time, when he left his throne, was coming down. He was giving hands when he went to Sister Kese. I don't know if he heard our conversation. He, he shaked her hands twice. <laughs> like, I heard you. I heard you. Uh, it was very deep. My mothers are here. I don't know why they are shy. Why I don't know why they, they don't want to bring what Tatanzambe has done for us. We had the tabernacle festivity, Elder Mutave, and the entire trip. From the tabernacle festivity, once the Banto family arrived until to the entire, I, I could not all see. The entire, every time my Amona was speaking, he was mentioning about the Banto project, diaspora. Uh -huh. Like, it is from us. Uh, like Africa, Sikama, Africa, Sikama. <laughs> and what does that mean? Like, like Matoku Yandumba in Geta, like young ladies and young men get ready. Like, yes, I'm ready. Mm. Like, mm. This is what we do always in our band to gathering. In Geta, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yala. <laughs> and, and then like Africa, Sikama, Africa, Sikama. Mm -hmm. It is about us as well, Sikama. Uh, so Simon Toko was very, very happy. Um, as Sister uh, Misha said, it was like I knew the mothers long time ago. It was, I, I didn't see any a, a difference to be with them in person. It was natural, amazing. It was fantastic. And mm -hmm. everybody was not shy to speak, to eat. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Brother Tusamba, for the sake of those viewers who watch us online, what do you mean when you say Simao Toko came down and he was shaking their hands? Was it Bishop Nunes? And why do you say Simao Toko? Just explain oh, for the benefit of those who might watch this and be wondering, what is he talking about? Thank you, Lord Elder. See, we are already in another team with <laughs> uh, We know that in our Banto culture, what dies is the body. Actually, the body doesn't die. It goes back to where it came from. But the spirit is still alive. Currently, there is the, an elder who is ruling the Tokoist church. His name is Bishop Afonso Nunes. But Simon Toko physically is dead, but the spirit is still alive. So the spirit of Simon Toko, he speaks upon Bishop Afonso Nunes. So when I, Bishop Afonso Nunes stands to speak. He, he doesn't speak on his behalf. I mean, he, he, it is not him speaking, mm -hmm. but is the spirit of Simon Toko speaking in him. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of Simon Toko does all the wonders, all the miracles that we have been seeing uh, in the Tokoist um, Mm -hmm. people call it church, assembly, whatever you want to <laughs> call it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he, the Montoko spirit came upon him in the year of 2000. Mm. So it, the Montoko died in uh, 1983. Mm. It took 16 years uh, that he didn't come. After 16 years, Simon Toko himself, he chose Bishop Alfonso Nunes mm -hmm. to work in him, to continue with his work. Mm -hmm. Today, it is more simple and I can, um, I just used to hear that Simon Toko came back to bring everybody together 
all the family around the world all together. But now that I saw the diaspora coming to the land, coming in Angola, that prophecy came to my mind. We have a Maroya, as Mama Margaret Shelley, uh, and Matzola, her sister Kessa, and her other Makayelo. Africa, people say that we are starving. Mm -hmm. We say that we have no money. Mm -hmm. We say that we have nothing. But by the grace of Tatanzamba and Pungu to land, Bishop Afonso Nuni, that's Simon talking him, who was able, that's another great miracle, to feed us throughout 14 days. Nobody was lacking for food. When we were organizing this trip, Elder uh, Mutavi, Mama Royal's Day, she's part of the organization, we were afraid that our fellow Banto family, they don't have enough money to pay hotel and so on to sustain themselves. And they say, let us pray, family. And let's take this issue to the elders so that they can at least give us an hotel or somewhere to stay. It wasn't five star, but our mothers, I was very happy but that, that our mothers at least they had somewhere to sleep in Luanda, that is the capital city of Angola. They had a free hotel, a free transportation from Luanda to Ntaya, it, it is far, it's far. It wasn't five-star uh, bus, mm -hmm. but they managed to be there for free, even when they arrived in Taya. We were mm -hmm. afraid mm -hmm. that they could sleep on the tents. Mm -hmm. But Simon Toko said, no, mm -hmm. they are my guests. <laughs> I'm going to put them in the hotel. Mm. Everybody else, they were in the tents, but our fellow mothers, they were five stars. They were like uh, being treated <laughs> with a special attention. Yeah. They had their own hotel and so on. So it was amazing. Sorry for wow. taking so long. No, no problem. <laughs> no problem. Very uh, good responses. Very good responses. No yeah. problem. Now, let me go Thank back you. to the song. Let me go back to the song. Mama Margaret. You know, you're like the whole band for us, Bantu Tokoista. And I, I, for those who don't know, when I first joined uh, the Bantu Tokoista group, I think it was during a prayer session or something. And then Mama Margaret sang. And I asked myself, where is Mama Margaret? I think I even asked her and she told me she's in Trinidad. And I said, are you visiting? Are you from Congo? She said, no, I am born and raised here in Trinidad. And I said, what language were you singing in? And she said, Kikongo. And I asked her, what does that song mean? And she explained to me. So I asked her, who taught you this song? Then she went ahead to give me a testimony about how it was given to her in a dream. And she came and sang it. And she knows the words and she knows the, the meaning. So, Mama Margaret. <laughs> That's why I'm calling you the band <laughs> of the Bantu group. <laughs> uh, what was this song? What is the meaning of this song that you broke out in and started singing and leading the rest? <laughs> oh, uh, that's when I reached uh, um, Angola. Um, when we got there, there was Daniel. I did, um, one of the um, brother Daniel and... So somebody went to, was on the bus and he said, um, let's sing. You know, he asked me if I bring my shark shark and I said, yes. Um, so I think Brother Dan is, let's sing Tona Tona. I like, okay, you know, I know the song. So let's sing. So we started to sing. And um, and then he asked for some other song he said he liked. So we, we sang that song. He said, okay, we're going to get ready to go in the tabernacle. But Tona means thank you. That's the you know the meaning of the song is thank you. So we went um walking. I think we have a video. We walking going into the tabernacle that day, 
And the third, you know, we continue with that very song. So we reach in the tabernacle and they said, okay, um, we will we have to sing a song, you know, for the for the whole entire audience. Like, okay. <laughs> so the band you know, and we started to sing to the turn and have a mime owner, well, he loved the song, as Chisumba said, and he came down after that song, like, you know, um, we from the diaspora singing a song like that for everybody in this huge tabernacle. It was, you know, it was like, ah, oh, you know, that they're holding their breath, you know. So we from the diaspora, like, you know, we speak English, you know, we don't really um know verse in um Congo. But yeah, and um, I remember, but it's from um yeah, yeah, Mikhail, his sister used to teach, you know songs and she said come on a Sunday and you know like 10 we would go and learn this song and she was trying to get some of the meaning for us I have it written down so but I can't, I can't put my hands on it now so, but that I remember that song is thank you Tonda Tonda yeah to, to me it's the thank you so he asked that and brother Daniel um <laughs> asked for that song and we started singing that song so we went into the tabernacle with that song and Papa Mayamona held on to that song and he always want that song to be sung at all the time, you know, we sing and um, told them, oh, you know, he will, he will always act for that song, even call him by name to sing that song, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, that 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 was something else, yeah. But um, with my Amy Kelly say, see those songs that you all learned, that's why I learned those few songs. He say, one day that song will be so, that song will be important to you. And I remember him saying that. He said, that song, remember those songs? Learn the song one day that those songs will be important to you. So yes, that's what I have to share. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mama Margaret. Um maybe maybe my Mario daughter will take this one or anybody who 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 remembers this story. So earlier on, um, uh, Brother Tusamba, you talked about that when Simao Toko died, you know, um he came back and has been operating through the body of Bishop Nunes uh, as a Vati, right? Now, uh, I am aware because I sat down with Mama Royal daughter a few weeks ago, we got to meet uh, in person and she told me a story about uh, a certain uh, man who was there in Angola and this man, this man's father interacted with Simao Toko and received a Bible from Simao Toko. So, um, Ada, my, let me ask Mama Royal daughter because she explained this to me. So, please just explain to everybody here what was the connection between this man who attended the the event in Angola and his father and what was the connection between that those two people, father and son, and Bishop Nunes and Simao Toko. And I'm asking I want this so brother that... to samba. I want okay. brother to samba to answer that because he knows the story better than me. I don't okay. want to mess it up. All right. No, but it will sound better if a diaspora person answer it. Okay. Yeah. Please, Mama. Okay, so there was this guy, this older um, Caucasian guy, and he was always sitting in the corner, you know, um, by himself. But he was there for everything, every event that we had. He stayed in a hotel with us. And so um, I asked, who is this man? You know, and um, the story I was told was like, it blew my mind. I was told that this man's father knew Simon Toko. And when Simon Toko was dying, before he died, he gave this man a Bible, his Bible. And he said to him, I will come back from my Bible. Hold on to my Bible. I will come back for it. And he told him some other things that only him and Simon Toko knew. And so Simon Toko passed away. And then 
his father, the man's father, passed away. But he gave him the Bible and he gave him all the information that uh, Simon Toko gave him. And so when the spirit of Simon Toko came into the bishop, he showed up at this man's door and he says, I have come for my Bible. Wait, let me just verify this. So you're saying the son yes. who was given, the Caucasian son yes. who was given the Bible by his father right. is, is in possession of the Bible. Yes. And has been given the story. Yes. He's been given the story from Simao Toko that was passed to his dad, and now he's a custodian of the story and the Bible. Correct. And so 20 or whatever years ago, Bishop Nunes shows up at the son's house, the one who's in possession of the history and the Bible, and tells yes. him, I'm here for my Bible? Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. Wow. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Um, that's pretty much the story. And so, you know, this man became a believer and he's been following the Tokoist for ever since then. Wow. Mm. So something very interesting there that you said, that Bishop Nunes came and said, I am here for my Bible. Right? And Simao Toko said, hold on to this Bible until I come back for it. I learned this right. from Brother Benica uh, when I was down there meeting Brother Benica in, or rather up there in South Africa. He told me, when you hear Avate speak, so in this case, Bishop Nunes, when they transition and speak in first person, now they're operating as a vati. They're operating as the other person. Notice that you said that he told this son of the other guy, I am here for my Bible. And I'm sure you guys must have experienced probably many times where he was speaking in first person at the events in Angola. Correct. It, it's very, very powerful because uh, you can tell, you know, when uh, Simon Toko is there, mm. the energy in the place changes. You will see a lot of people start to manifest, you know, mm. the spirit. And um, he starts to speak and, and he says things like, I have been to the holy city. I've touched it. I've seen it. It is ready, you know, and he he stops speaking in the third person and he starts speaking in the first person. Like and things that that uh Simon Toko only has the authority to speak. You will hear him speaking, like I have been to the holy city, I've I've seen the new Jerusalem, you know, I've touched it. Like and even when he came down to shake our hands, when he shook our hands, like it was so powerful, like he almost wanted to take your hand off. And then there was another time he shook my hand and it was like really, you know, a normal handshake. And then somebody says, oh yeah, that's when Simon Toko shakes your hand. He shakes it really strong. Mm -hmm. So there's an energy as well in the, in the atmosphere when we see, when we hear, when Simon Toko comes and you can hear his voice start speaking with a certain authority. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Elder. Elder Mikhail, did you have something to say? Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. I was okay. just agreeing. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I wanted to add that, you know, when you say that um, there's a lot of power when 
uh, Simao Toko manifest. And you say that you can see it even in other people. You mentioned that you could see it in other people, especially people who are vates, right? That they begin to manifest in the spirit. What are some of the things that, what are some of the ways that they manifest in the spirit, okay? Uh, that you can either see or perceive like here or things like that. And I'll give you an example. Um, when we went to South Africa and a young man uh, manifested as Kimbangu, mm. when he started speaking, first he said, you know, I am Kimbangu. And then he said, I have been sent by my Amona. And this is the message. And he went ahead and started giving the message. Elder Nick is on here. Nick Mutavi, if, if you are able, uh, please, you know, chime in and confirm what I'm saying. I don't want to misspeak. Um, one of the things that Kimbangu said, he talked about the way we had knowledge about Kimpavita, about Kimbangu, about what the Portuguese did. And he told the congregation, you don't need to teach these guys this stuff. They know it. They've been studying it. And he's looking at us while he's speaking. And of course, we are nodding in agreement. And many of you know, right here on this channel, we had been discussing the book of Kimbangu. We had talked about the 20 prophecies, you know. So him speaking those things that we had been doing was a manifestation that was evident that there was a higher power in operation. Um, interestingly enough, when we went to that uh, church in, in Cape Town, we were just going for service. But after they prayed, after the elders prayed in the tabernacle, they came and we started the service and they asked us right at the beginning, you know, Say something. What do you have to say? <laughs> Anything. Say hello. And so when I got up, I said, we've really re been reading a lot of information, even in Christianity. We are full of knowledge of Christianity. We are also full of knowledge of the Tokoista movement because Brother Tusamba and Benika and Speci have been educating us. But we want to see power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, I thought I was speaking, but it was not really me speaking. And I realized later on, I think I asked for too much. Because when Kimbangu showed up, he spoke for over an hour. And he was manifesting that power. Wow. You know? So when you see people saying things that only you know, or that they wouldn't know ordinarily, that is a manifestation. Just like Simao Toko went to that uh, man and said, I'm here for my Bible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mama Margaret, That's you had your hand up. Me. Yep. Mama Margaret, you had your hand up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Um, we're just speaking about the party and um it says some things that happened that you know memorable in um in the land. So um, as a reason through the, the little um, book we got and um, the negatives and positive consequences of the days and of the infusion of the Holy Spirit in Africa. Um, so I was trying to remember when um, the day before that I spoke about the child, the, the young lady who came and she had a smile. And when I remember, Stephen Toko always have this smile on his face. So she, she had a smile on her face and I said, but the kind of picture again, I remember the, the smile on her face and the dove behind his head. So when I saw that, I didn't pay much mind to the book. And so I pick up the book and say, my goodness, look, look, look at her. <laughs> look at that. The, the dove, you know, um, behind his head. So I started to, to laugh at that. But um, what I wanted to read from the book is um, remembering that time. Um, so I was trying to remember what day. I saw, but I was I am Mama Royal in the room that damn that the Holy Spirit came. So 
we were, I saw a friend, I said, what day that was? What happened? We were going somewhere. But it was before we went to Sulumongu that morning that stuff came. So I was, I, I will read this little part here. The positive response on the part of God the Father, who is anointed one. The prophet Simon Gonzalez Toko expressed in the descent of the Holy Spirit gave rise to the remembrance of the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ in the world on July 25, 1949, and consequently, the beginning of the winding path and con countries ordeals described in point it's on the con conceptual framework and the contextualization. So that winding road is where we were going up to the mountain. That is the, the um, Holy Spirit that just came that morning before we left to go on that trip. And that is the, as I said, the winding paths. Because when you look, I saw any one of the pictures there, it will show one of the clips. You can see the winding paths going up to Zulumongo. And this part, um, His Holiness, the prophet Simon Gonzalez took with the Father Maimona, the tribes of the living God, knowing the seasons and temporal times, definitely con convenes the Church of Christ in the world to celebrate the 75th anniversary of the days of the effusion of the Holy Spirit in Africa and in the world. Here's the Holy City entire proceeds by the International Youth Day, certainly for your great purpose, for the greater good of God, children and humanity. And I remember this dream I had about, I said, where am I going with these youths in a, in a bus? And this is exactly what took place. So I bought the slippers, which I already bought a slipper. And I said, it's so pretty and it's so comfortable. But where am I going? And, you know, the, hand, the, the bus was packed, but they made room for me to fit in the bus. And I was <laughs> going in this dream. So this, and I watched because I said, but look, I was on this bus with these youths going, going on the same with the slippers and it's actually happening in reality, you know? So, <laughs> so all these things, all the little pieces and I know are putting together. All the, all the little pieces, the, 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 the celebration of the 70, 75th anniversary of the descent of the Holy Spirit is a central <laughs> and basic point. And this is the epicenter of the activity because without the descent of the Holy Spirit, there will be no youth jubilee. The youth organization turns 50 and the South Af and, the, and the church in 75 being a higher point that will end all activities without the descent of the Holy Spirit in Africa. There will be no remembrance of the church. There will be no independence of countries under the colonial yoke, and there will be no political, economic, and religious freedom that Africa experienced today. I don't want to share this. Wow. The Holy Spirit. That happened, and that is a point of remembrance to me, and I can't forget that. So, that Mama, morning. Mama Margaret, please explain what happened. Uh, and by the way, thank you very much for what you read. It's very good. But you mentioned that you, the Holy Spirit came to you. Yeah. Explain in detail how. I was both. I am a, I'm a royal. We were in, the, it was in the more early, and normally I would pull the blinds in the night. But that morning we were getting ready, and now we're trying to hustle to get to the bus to, to go on our trip. And I hear this noise outside the window, like a beating. So I pull the blind. I want to pull the blind. It's what I tell her, it's like a halo. And this big, this dog, and say, Mama, right, come, come and look at this thing. It's like a hit, the dog in the window and batting so hard against the window. And I call her to see and say, come, come, look, look at this. There's a dog in the window. And it, it's it's huge, I'm telling you. And just as you see the picture I'm showing you with the dog, that's how it appeared. But like there's a like in another phase with this thing because it engulfed the window. It's a big window. And I call her to see, come and look at this. <laughs> come and look at this. That's it. Day before we end up. That morning we were to go onto Zulu Moon, go to take that walk. That was, that was like, I said, she was like a witness to this, telling her, come to look at this thing, let you know, that's in the window. Wow. Yeah. Mama Ray, it's, daughter. Like, it's, 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 it's like in another cloud, it's a huge, and a feeling that I was explaining, I said, this, this is like a, it's a different phase. It's so huge and light and it's just take over the window. Mm. Mm. 
Mama Roy, your daughter, what did you see when you went over? <laughs> yeah, it was a dove, this huge dove, and he was just flapping his wings. But he was taking his wings and hitting the window, like trying to get our attention. We heard this noise, and I'm like, what is that noise? She went over to the window, and the dove was literally hitting the, the, the window with his wings, trying to get our attention. It was the most incredible thing that I've ever seen. It's a white dove. <laughs> you had them, two witnesses. I didn't. I wasn't there. There they are. They've said it again. Manifestation. Manifestation. Yes. This yes. is the power, you know? Okay. My Mario daughter, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah, I... Talking about the manifestation, when me and Speshi had spoken, um, you know, it was like we were there just thinking that we were going to get some spiritual awakening from these people. But we didn't know the impact that us being there had. And so um, when we gave our little... Um, dissertation um the bishop because normally he he comes in the evening every evening for this for the seminars when we were supposed to give our question we we did our our dissertation in the afternoon and then we come back the next morning because people have questions on what we said and so we were surprised that when we got there that day he was already there it was like 10 o'clock in the morning. He was already there. And so, you know, we spoke and we spoke in, in depth about the dreams that we were having, you know, and I addressed him personally. And I said, father of my father, we have heard you. We know that you have called us. We are here because we believe, you know, and you know, you don't know what you're saying that is the Moanda really using you. And so when we were done speaking, he got up and he read from Isaiah 40, 43. And I'm going to read what he read from verses eight. It says, bring forth the blind people that have eyes and the deaf that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together and let the people be assembled. Who among you can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring forth their witnesses that they may be justified or let them hear and say it, it is truth. You are my witnesses, said the Lord, and my servants whom I have chosen that you may know and believe and understand that I am he, before me, there was no God formed, neither shall there be any after. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no, no Savior. I have declared, and I have saved, and I have chewed, when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. Yea, before the day was, I am and he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand, and I, I will work, and who shall, who shall let it? And he was speaking with so much power and authority, we were sitting there frozen, like, you know, <laughs> because he says, you are my witnesses, I called you. If I didn't call you, you couldn't be here. We were just speaking right. about all the dreams and the visions that we were having. And we understood that he had called us. We we had just referenced Isaiah 11, uh, you know, that he would reach out his hand a second time to gather his people. And we were showing how, you know, we all mm -hmm. had gotten dreams and visions. And that man stood up and that man spoke and we were like mesmerized, like, he says, "You am um, I called you? I brought you here because you are my witnesses." We we were just flabbergasted at that point. We we didn't have anything more to say. <laughs> <Didn't> get that. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> Welcome, Sister Matweedy. Sister Matweedy, some of you may know her as Sister Petrina <laughs> in Belgium. She is one of those who went down to Angola. Um, we're just talking about the experiences out there uh, that you had. Now, Mama Royal Daughter, let me go back to you. So you all had gotten up and people were giving their testimonies of how they've had dreams and what they've seen in those dreams and that basically in those dreams they were being called or they were being given signals uh, by Simao Toko, by Tatanzambe. If you don't mind, tell us about one of your dreams or any of your dreams, especially the ones that are very related to your role that you played when you went down to Angola. Wow. I, all the dreams, you know, the scripture says that my young man shall see dreams and my old man shall see visions. We had no idea, you know, we all started getting dreams and we would come on the Zoom and relate, you know, I dreamt this and I dreamt this and I dreamt this. And, you know, Mama Matuzola had dreamt Isaiah eleven eleven. Mama Margaret dreamt. It was like four people got that same dream. Sister Petrina got De Deuteronomy eleven eleven, you know. And these all all our dreams were somehow being connected, you know. And so then, um, Sister Kiese dreamed that she saw this cloud coming, leaving the sky and coming towards her really fast. And, you know, she came on the, on the Zoom and she related that dream. And it was like four days later, I get a similar dream. I saw this cloud coming towards me really, really fast. And in my dream, I'm saying, I want to see, I, it better be Black Jesus. I'm looking in the cloud because I understand the scriptures say that Isaiah will come in the cloud. And so I said, it better be Black Jesus. And I'm looking. <laughs> And the, the, the face of Simone Toko comes out of the cloud and he's looking at me and I'm like, yes, Black Jesus is Black Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, I think there was a, I think Mama Margaret had a similar dream with the cloud and we were all getting these dreams. And then I dreamed like just before um, we were already planning to go to Angola I dreamed that I was an eagle, you know, and I'm saying, I'm looking at the eagle and he turns his head and he there's no beak. And I'm like, well, how come the eagle has no beak? And then out of the blue, a hand comes <laughs> and puts a beak on him. But it's this luminous color, like a pearl color beak. It's not just a white beak, it's very luminous. And I, I'm saying to, because I'm the eagle, you know, and I said, I want to go up high to see the earth from like that satellite view of the earth. And the eagle took off and I woke up and I, I so I said to Brother Benika, I said, Brother Benika, I had this dream that I was an eagle. And he said to me, really? And he didn't say anything else. And the next day we had a, a prayer session that Thursday and he comes up and he, he brings up the chapter in the Bible where it says the eagles will gather where the corpses. And that was Isaiah speaking, the eagles will gather where the corpses. And even when he spoke that, I, it, it took me a little while to process that whole thing. I had no idea. So then um, I had no idea too that at the time that I would be speaking at the um, conference. So we get to the, uh, it was like almost before we got to entire, uh, Brother Tusamba says to me, you have been chosen to speak. I'm like, me? <laughs> On what? <laughs> you know? <laughs> so... It was like so incredible how he told us that we were the eagles. You know, I got the dream. Other people got the dream. I think Mama Margaret got a dream about an eagle as well. And 
we didn't know that we were fulfilling that scripture that when we went to Antia, where the body of Simon Toko is, we would be fulfilling the scripture, the eagles will gather where the body, where the corpse is. You know, I, and I had no idea even as I saw that beak get put on the bird that I would be speaking. So it, it's a lot of things, a lot of dreams and visions that we were all having. And we had no idea that it was his calling that, you know, that, but the first dream we got was Isaiah 11, where he would reach out a second time to call his children from e Elam and Petros and this land and that land and the islands of the sea. So, I mean, it took us a minute to process this because nobody thinks that they're walking in prophecy, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But these are some of the things that we had discussed. And then he got up and he says, yes, I called you because you are my witnesses. And we, we, we were just floored then. We had nothing more we could say <laughs> in Geta. Wow. He says, yes, I, first person, I called you. <laughs> So you know who's speaking at that point. Wow. Elder Makayilu, thank you so much for joining us. I see your message that you have to jump off to another session. Uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to join us. Feel free to welcome back. And when oh, you I, I'll definitely be back. All right. I definitely will be back. <laughs> All right. Welcome. Okay. Um, do we have any questions from... Anybody else? I don't want to be just the only one asking the questions. If anybody has a question or a comment to share to the group, uh, especially those who took the trip down to Angola, feel free to raise your hand. Mama Margaret, go ahead. Uh, as she was speaking about in, is in 2021, April, I heard the word Zephaniah. Zephaniah. So I said, oh, let me take a look at Zephaniah because I don't you know, normally used to go and read the Bible. No, I read the Bible. Like, I, I know I read the whole Bible a year before, but I heard Zephaniah. So this is now I, when I'm putting it together now, I realize that he was saying, from the under rivers of Ethiopia, suppliants, even the daughters of my disposal shall bring my offerings. So this took place now. Because I heard that in 2021, not knowing that this is what is going to happen. So it's all these things added up and you're putting pieces together as dream at preparing clothes, going where I said, I don't want to, why am I going preparing clothes and, and all these things leading up to this. So when you put all together, it makes sense now, hearing that word, Zephaniah. So I was allowed to go and read Zephaniah, but still not making, it didn't make sense to me. So I read in some of the things and I know it's like, Oh, I'm so surprised. Why? Why this thing would destroy this and it was do this and it would do that. But and you get a book to read, but this is the part that makes sense now. You will come and bring my gifts in and my display. Yes, the rivers. <laughs> so all these things put together, put together all the little bits and pieces. Yeah. Um, that same tab tabernacle said with the flowers I see in my dream, and we tell him the and I saw this in my dream. This is what is making sense. All these things, I put everything together and I said, and I keep looking around. Said, this is making so much sense. So everything like a jigsaw puzzle, everything is fit together. Yes. <laughs> Talk to us a little bit more about the offering that you've quoted in that scripture, Zephaniah 310. In what way did this come true? In oh, what well, way did you um, bring an offering? Well, we... When we went into the Tabernacle, that was covenant. We had to, well, as you see now, Bernika tell us, oh, let's go up. So that that is they took an offering in the tab um the tabernacle mm -hmm. when we reached there. But when we went to Antia, I think that was a big one. Everybody bringing our offerings like um things they produce and they bring money, and that was the final, I think the, the big gala of the whole thing. Bring the offering in that sacred place because in time it's the holy of holies that place there. So that mm -hmm. I think that was our final offering there with people bringing produce and bringing whatsoever they had. They were bringing it in that place. Mm -hmm. 
Now, do yeah. they do do they bring offerings to that place every other time they meet, or do they only do this? Oh, at I, a I don't know. I, I think I don't think so. You know, I don't think so because I think that was a celebration of the seventy-five years. I think that some jubilee. I, I think it's that. I'm not sure. Can maybe ask my mother, my mama royal to maybe explain my also summer if he's still there. I'm not too sure okay. about that. So I'm going to chime in here. So when we first went, the first day we got there, we just had time to get dressed and go to temple. We went straight from the airport. We got dressed. We went to temple. So it was uh, Sister Rafaela, um, Mama Margaret, myself, Sister Petrina, and Sister Kiese. And so... Um, we didn't know they was going to call us up to say anything. They welcomed us. And so they called us up one at a time <laughs> to say something. And uh, <laughs> Sister Rafaela and um, Sister Kiese started talking about their dreams, how they had seen, how they, how they had encountered Simon Toku. So... Um, Everybody was uh, talking about their encounter. So I go up there and I'm like, you know, I'm not even, I just, the thing that came to my head was from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, your daughters, <laughs> your suppliants will um, bring their offerings. And I said, we, have come to offer ourselves as living sacrifice before the Most High. And so I had no idea that, you know, that was a trigger for, um, for my Amona. And the bishop started crying. I had no idea that that was the day of the offering it, because it was the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles that there there was an offering. So we were, I was just speaking of the, the scripture that came to my head. I didn't know that that was the offering, you know? And so it's like my Amona was waiting for that. And he spoke about that for like three nights. Then the night, the, the fourth night he spoke about offering yourself as a living sacrifice. But we didn't have any idea these things that we were saying and the things that we were doing were a signal to my Amona. Because uh, that last day, when we gave our offering that last day, we didn't know that there was going to be an offering either. We just went to, it was the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles and we were in Antia and they called for the offering. And so we went and uh, Benika's like, follow me. And we, so we're going, I'm like, Benika, where are we going? He says, we're going to give our offering. And so we went up and gave our offering. And then the scripture comes to my head. In my holy mountain where I call, said you were not my people, that in that mountain, in that place, there I will accept your offering. And there I will say, you are my people. And we come back from giving our offering. And the next thing I hear my Amona say, Isolele is now one nation. Ooh, 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 wow. It blew my mind. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute, my mother daughter. This is a bit heavy. This is really heavy. You just quoted a scripture about a mountain. What scripture is that? I think it's in Hosea. Okay. There, there were several scriptures. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can I can uh, remember them. It was in Hosea 1 when he spoke about in that mountain where I said you were not my people, there I will accept your offering. Um, and there I would say, it, uh, there were several scriptures. So Obadiah 1, 15 to 18. Romans 9. 25 and 26 and Hosea 1 10 and 11 and Ezekiel 2040 
All right. Thank you. Thank you for those scriptures. So when you say this, Mayamona comes up or Bishop Nunes comes up and speaks as Mayamona and says, just repeat it again. Isolele is? Isolele is now one nation. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is huge. That is huge. I couldn't even catch my breath. <laughs> because it's like how God, oh, it kind of happened so subtle because he knew I guess he knew what he was going to say but he made us he allowed us to come give the offering so that the scripture would be completely fulfilled thank you thank you Elder Michael go ahead you've been very patient thank you had a question um, about dreams after you all returned. Have anybody had um, dreams after, since you all returned from um, from Angola? I had one dream when I returned. But normally two. <laughs> One, I was attacked, but all praise to the most high. Well, you know, with praise and all things is possible. So I prayed about that. I, I got attacked. I saw it in yeah. But the second one I saw the youths. I was um they all I saw a lot of youths, a lot of them in white robes. They were in white clothes and they had this robe over them and they were all in white. And I was saying, wow, there was so much and so I was looking at the clothes they were wearing. I said, they have on these like tunics, you know, over their shoulder. I said, what? And looking kind of rough, but I like, I was in one of those tunics and I just lied on it and it felt so soft. You know, that's, that's the dream I had. Yeah, I lie in it and, and it felt so soft, but they were all in white and all the youths were in white robes. That's the dream I had. Wow. Thank you, Mama Margaret. Sister Michelle, go ahead. Yeah, okay, so dream, I didn't dream much when I was in Angola, I'm not quite sure why, um, but one of the dreams that I had, funny enough, this week, um, I was kind of taken back by it, but then just listening to Mama Royal, um, I'll, it kind of brought it back to my remembrance. Um, so on that day that um everyone was going up to go and go up to the front of the stage, I was sick. My temperature was high. Like I just, if I could have just curled up and went underneath the 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 chair and stepped, I would, <laughs> I would have. I was, I wasn't well. So everyone else went up, and I was like, I wish I could go. I'm gonna stay here. Just dance for me. <laughs> so um, so the dream that I had. Um, it, as I said, it took me back and then like what M Mama Roy was just saying. So in the dream, I was getting married and I was like, I was saw a white dress, but it was, I'm just reading from what I wrote down, but I was getting married to Courtney and I was like, well, I'm already married. Like, I don't understand. So then, um, it, but I could hear the two sticks have been brought back together. I kept waking up. I tried to see what else the dream was saying. All I got was Judah and Isolele. They are back together through the covenant of marriage. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, 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 uh. Wow, that is awesome. Thank you so much, Sister Michelle, for that. Oh, my goodness. All right. Anybody else? Wow. Can I got to chime in here. Go ahead. And remind us that, you know, we all know that in October, I think it was that Michelle and Courtney got married. And it was that marriage covenant that seemed to open up the doors for us. Because uh, they were having the hardest time, Courtney, getting his visa 
to go to Angola, to South Africa. He was stuck in South Africa, I think. Michelle knows the story better than me. But um, they, he finally got his visa, and they had to put the wedding off a couple of times. But they had that wedding, and it was the bishop that married them. And they thought it was just a small wedding. That wedding was broadcast over the entire world. And we were sitting there like we were at the wedding. But right after that, you know, they spoke to the bishop about how um, they were having such issues with visas moving around in Africa. And we were already thinking about going to Entire, but we were thinking that we have to um, work long in advance because of the visa restrictions. And next thing you know, there's no visa restrictions. And all the visa restrictions were dropped. And so we we knew that it was that wedding that was the door opener for us because they spoke to the bishop about the, these visa restrictions. So I had, I had to say that and get that. Get Thank you for that addition. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you, that history, that history puts things into context, you know. Wow. Welcome, Brother Nick. And I see somebody on iPhone. I don't know who that is, but if you could change your name so that we know who it is, or at least say hello. Uh, share would... me, Yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora, everyone. Kia ora. <laughs> Good to see you. Um, <clears throat> Bro, that lines. When you oh. did that, that must have been that fuel line burning all the way through. And then it threw fuel on the back side of the motor, so where it flamed up even more. So, yeah, so, well, I went inside and looked to see if they even had a fire extinguisher. Is this Elder right, Patrick? Everybody. Sounds like. Saw the whole fight Oops. Let me see. All right. Uh Elder Patrick, I don't know if you can hear me, but I think that sounded like you. Good to have you. Um okay. Do we have any 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 other questions? Uh we're coming up to the break. Uh anybody got a question for those who went out there to Angola? Go ahead, Nick. <clears throat> Oh yeah, I just want to um, ask um, uh, on your personal account, um, what was um, um, what was um, Alfonso Nunes like? Uh, the 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 actual the man of the um, the Tukoy's Church. What was he? What was he like personally to use? Whoever wants to take it first, go ahead. Inkita. Uh, he's such a pleasant man. Like, he's a father, a father figure. That's his aura. He's just a father. He, <laughs> he stands there, in, you know, during the week of the Feast of Tabernacles. That man stands on at the top of the, the stairs uh, in the portico of the temple, and he sees everything that's going on. One night there was a fight. He got off the stage and went, we we didn't know what was going on. They were fighting over seats. I was sitting here first, and he went all the way back. I mean, like he got he's a real eagle. He could see, he got vision, like x-ray vision. He saw people all the way back in the thousands of people that were sitting there. He went over there and straightened them out and came back and continued preaching like it was nothing. You know, <laughs> there was one night he was preaching and all the way in the back, there were people moving about. He's like, where y'all going? Where y'all moving to? <laughs> Like this time of the night, where y'all going? Like he's such a father, you know, and he's such he's such a a, a night, and he he just has this 
calming personality that, you know, when you're in his presence, you just, just a calm. He has such a calm spirit, you know, and um, very much like a father. You know, you think that this little man, he is, he, and when Simon Toko comes, he speaks with that huge authority. But I, that man has the most energy that I have ever seen in one person. <laughs> That man would jump for like one hour. He would continue jumping. And he got everybody jumping and dancing and singing. And he doesn't wait for anybody to do anything for him. He'll sing. He starts preaching. Then he breaks out in a song. And he's like, oh, y'all want to sleep? Now, nah, get up, <laughs> dance, let's dance. <laughs> you know, and he's like, exercise, get some exercise. <laughs> you know, like... I, I yeah, he has such a huge personality, really, really huge personality, but mu very much a father figure. Ingeta. Ingeta. Yes, I, I seen he was um, quite energetic because <laughs> he was dancing around too. <laughs> and I was like, how can this guy, like, he's just keep on going and going and going. <laughs> Yeah, and he goes from like midnight to like 5 a.m. And then he's like, all right, I'm going to let y'all go. Y'all need to get some sleep. Y'all need to get some rest. But he's like ready to go a sec a whole another five hours. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. A any, any other questions or comments from anyone? So in the temple, question, in the in the temple, um, is there like a seating arrangement? Do like ladies and sit on one side and gentlemen sit on that side, another side? What's it like? No, Margaret, I saw you shaking your head. No, um, but I didn't, um, this is, first, before you go into the temple, well, no shoes allowed, so you have to, you know, like, you have to kit up your shoes and put it in a, your bag, and, you know, you take it, you go in socks or bare feet or whatever the case is. But I didn't see the separation there, you know, they may, as, I don't, maybe as we did, they have the people who they invite, you know, officially, they would, they would place them in seats in front, or, you know, but we was a large amount, so we know, but I didn't see the, the separation of male, female, all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that there. I didn't see that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, and everybody came and they had covered or whatever the case may be. And it's huge inside of this. <laughs> so, being at my height, is like you have to, like, oh, look around, <laughs> you know? Yes, but um, I didn't see the separation. The kids there, the parents, I don't know. They make and, and they well behaved too because they don't hear nobody screaming, baby crying, and all this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It was just awesome. And then the band came in, and when we were there, when the bands came in, like, oh my goodness, they have room for everybody. It's huge. They had seats for everybody. Wow. The band was more than one band, and the choir, and it, it has seats for everybody. So about how many people were seated in the temple? Or what, or what do you think was the capacity of the temple? Uh, that is so good. If you were to, it's huge. If you, were to, if you were to estimate, do you think it's like what? Hmm. I don't know. That, that's a lot. That's a, a thousand. There was a lot of That temple is huge. And, there, and right. it's not like, yeah, it's huge, it bench, it just take a lot of people. If I was to say, I don't know what about that house no more, it's huge. Okay. A lot of people. Absolutely. Uh I was reading somewhere that that is the biggest temple in the world. Mm -hmm. So uh yeah. And then when they had the ground floor, that could seat thousands. Okay. And then mm -hmm. they have like on top, on the, on the second floor, they also have seating like a balcony kind of environment that people right. could sit 
on the top and watch down into the temple that everything was happening. And then they have a jumbotron in the, in the back of the temple. So those that can't are way in the back could see what's happening. Mm. But um, the, the bishop himself, he, he, he likes the idea of family. So it's like the families are all seated together. You know, uh, he's big on family. He was even asking one night we were there, who, who wants to get married? He brought up Michelle. I think, you know, like he is so <laughs> proud of Michelle and Courtney. Every night he was calling them, <laughs> you know? And so he was like, anybody else to get married? <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's very much a family man because, you know, he's big on, he seems big on family. Mm -hmm. Um, his wife sits next to him, his daughter, Norm, uh, the first day we went, she was the moderator for, in the temple. So, you know, I, I see, and you know, that's, that's the one thing that, um, um, stood out to me in, the, um, when we went was that these people are, the African people are big on family, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, whereas in the West, you know, uh, they destroyed our families and the pushes to destroy our families. Mm -hmm. In Africa, they're like very big on families. It's like you're not considered a man until you're married. And mm -hmm. like you can't hold certain positions unless you're married. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, um, he he's very big on family and the families were allowed to sit together. Mm -hmm. And every week he would call up all the ladies that have brought babies, you know, and stuff like that. So he's very mm. much into family. Mm. Mm. And what did you guys feel being in the presence of so many people dressed in white? Did that kind of like throw you off at first? Or what did it what did you feel like when you when you started seeing people in different places and almost everybody is white in dressed in white? love it you you felt what i loved it it's it felt pure it felt clean mm -hmm. you feel special mm -hmm. you know even here now um i work in the hospital i am covering my head when i'm going to work mm -hmm. um my two daughters are like want to cover their head you know, I'm so surprised that they want to do like African wrap on their head. Um, wow. My daughter was working. Wow. Yes. And they ask me like every day, when are we going back? Like, wow. <laughs> when are we going back? I'm like, girl, like <laughs> we need to fix some stuff first. Like, you know, but um, I'm proud because before, you know, you look at um, Moroccan women and, you know, and we had a kind of way of thinking about them wrapping their head and covering themselves up and things like that. But now I just feel beautiful, you know, wrapping my head, um, covering myself up. You know, I, I'm even thinking about the clothesline, you know, so I'm like, I'm all for it. Mm. I'm all for it right now. Yeah. <laughs> my, my, my. Oh my goodness. You know, I remember the first day we had this, zoom session and i was talking to you sister matweedy and you asked me why are you doing this and i said to bring people together i'm glad that you've gotten together with other people not just here you know <laughs> through this trip you know could you tell us why you're now referred to as matweedy and where that name came from um this name came from um, Brother Bonica, mom, um, when she was in the, how you call it? Um, she's a Vati, right. and the presence of the Mwanda was in her. And I think we were all asking for names or something like that, if I'm not sure. But that's the name that I get. Um, yeah, Matsvidi. So... Yeah, I would. I'm using it. You're down. I will be glad to call you the name that you have, Sister Matridi. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> 
<laughs> or don't do. Okay. Um, Elder, I'm sorry. I'm, go ahead. I'm sorry. Apologies, everybody. It's Matuzola. I'm iPhone, by the way. Oh. I had to step away from my, I got a okay. lot going on on this end, so I had to step away from my computer, so that's why. Okay. And I couldn't answer. But what you just said about the white mm -hmm. and seeing the people, mm -hmm. it left me, I, I was in awe. Mm. It left me with a sense of awe. Mm. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm sorry, I can't turn on my camera. camera. Um, but anyway, it left me with a sense of awe to see those people. I, I can re vividly recall one night when, um, when the, during the service, and watching the guy, the man that was the, we would call him the conductor, the person that was um, leading the, the singers. And he was conducting, you know, and he was dressed in all white, as everybody was. But to see that man, when he walked up to take his position, bow down in that dirt, in his white clothes, as though those clothes did not matter at all. He simply bowed down, humbled himself when he, before he started to conduct and after he was done. And it was just that you could just see the things that are important to us here in the West. Those things do not impede the reverence that the people have for the most high when they come before the most high it is serious business and as i said that just left me with such a deep sense of awe i just i, I it was you had to just see it and experience it to understand it to see how the people would humbled themselves they would get down on their face and worship and humble themselves before the most high without giving any thought to clothes or anything like that it was all about just seeking the most high it's all about him you can just tell it's all about him not about you know anything else so yeah i just thought that experience was very um it was very impactful wow that that is deep and nice that is quite an observation you know leaves us quite challenged i must say you know us in the west and in other societies where we think we are much better off than them mama machuzola i was sharing some photo montage at the beginning and in one of the photos, you seem to be looking at some clothing. What was going on there? Like some clothes? Um, I was preparing. I was just preparing a table of, of items for the children mm -hmm. when we were getting ready to, um, when we were laying everything out for the children, everybody, you know, different people had brought you know, things to share with the children. And so that's what that was when everybody had come into the room okay. to, um, to, sh to get everything ready so that we could share with the, um, with the children. Yeah, that, that, that was quite amazing. All right. Okay. I see. I see. Okay. Um, it's, it's been, it's been an awesome session hearing from you all, um, especially now that, you know, you're back to where you came from and, you know, a lot of this information, you're beginning to digest it, you're beginning to understand it. Um, you know, as much as we can, we'll keep coming back and talking about your experiences and the revelations that you're getting about what they mean. You know, we don't want to miss a thing. We don't want to miss a thing at all. So <laughs> I see. I, and can I just say one more thing before I have to go? Sure. I got to go quickly. Sure. I just want to add this, you know, just listening to the testimonies, everybody today. And it was confirmational to me because when I came back and started trying to process all of this and I asked 
Tadanzami, you know, okay, I'm going to start by saying this. You know how when, even when, um, when the prophets would see something in the spirit, they would have to, um, and the Most High would often ask them what they see. Mm -hmm. Even though they're looking at this in spirit, they can't interpret it. So it's like they needed, they needed the Tanzambi or they needed the angel or to tell them what they see, to help them interpret what it is that they're looking at. Mm -hmm. You know, because even Ezekiel, I remember him saying, thou knowest, Lord, or, you know, a lot of times when they would see something in the spirit, they needed the revelation. They needed the father to open their eye, understanding to what it is that they're seeing. Mm -hmm. And so that's how it was for me. I needed Zami to help me interpret and understand what I saw. Mm -hmm. And because it was there were many things that i saw but those things were deeper than mm -hmm. what my eyes were were able to perceive mm -hmm. you know my my spiritual senses need to perceive them mm -hmm. as well as my physical eyes and so i just want i just said all that to say that when i was listening to the testimonies today it confirmed what the most high had um spoken to me in the book of Acts, I think it is, when he said, you shall be my witnesses in mm -hmm. Jerusalem and Samaria and all these different places to the other most parts of the earth. And mm -hmm. so the Most High told me, I called you, I sent you to be my witness. Mm -hmm. I sent you to be my witness that Africa is the Holy Land. And mm -hmm. these are my people. And so when I heard Royal given that scripture, about being the witness in Isaiah, that is exactly what the Most High sent. I, I know that's what he sent me there to do. He sent me there to be his witness. And I am a witness. A witness can give testimony of what is of what they have seen or what they have heard or what they have experienced. So Madonna Masaka in get them. In get that. Wow. Ngeta. You will be my witness, Ingeta. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share if you find this content helpful.